Now, personally, I'm a big believer in you shouldn't let stuff linger forever. You shouldn't carry a grudge forever because you don't accomplish anything by it. You don't win because of it. And there's nothing worse than too little too late when it comes to forgiving. I'm not saying forget, but forgiving, learning, and moving on from whatever it is that's kind of holding you up. And for years, I was frustrated with the WWE and their inability to make peace with people such as the Macho Man Randy Savage and ultimately, as well, the Ultimate Warrior. And unlike in the case of the Macho Man, at least the WWE and the Ultimate Warrior um, had a little bit of cooler heads prevail and finally made peace before it was too late. And we found out how just close to too late it ultimately was. So even with knowing who Warrior was away from the wrestling world and some of the bad, horrible things they had said, it didn't take away from the fact that he was still a very influential uh, WWE superstar in my history as a professional wrestling fan, especially as a kid, that he was a big star in his time, and he made the company and himself a lot of money. I don't care how much anybody has tried to diminish that over the years up to and including the WWE, it doesn't change the fact that all those things are true. And, and honestly, when talking about somebody like the Ultimate Warrior and some of those bad things, you know, Let's be honest, uh, the WWE isn't exactly uh, the poster boy for great behavior and celebrating great behavior. When you look at some of the people in their Hall of Fame, still in their Hall of Fame, Donald Trump, that's pretty much all I should have to say. Stone Cold Steve Austin, a known and convicted woman beater, and we celebrate him like he's the greatest thing ever. Mike Tyson, whether you believe it or not, the fact is he was a convicted rapist. And again, this company goes out of its way to celebrate the legacy and importance and significance in the WWE timeline of Mike Tyson. Superfly Jimmy Snuka, just ask Nancy Argentino how that went down. Oh wait, you can't because she's dead. Pat Patterson, really a power type of sexual predator known for his great harassing skills and coming on to wrestlers and everything else. But these are the type of people that the WWE has celebrated over the years and still continues to celebrate like they have great, tremendous legacies. And in terms of a WWE standpoint, they kind of do. But there's also that other additional baggage that goes along with them. But it doesn't stop the WWE from celebrating those guys and putting them on a pedestal. It just doesn't. So it's something that's bothered me over the years when it's come to Hulk Hogan in recent years specifically with the ignorant racist crap that he said, how the WWE blackballed him, blacklisted him, removed him from their Hall of Fame, but they still celebrate the president, Donald Trump. They still celebrate Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mike Tyson, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, Pat Patterson, Sorry, in the grand scheme of things, being a racist is terrible, but is it really worse than being a woman beater, a convicted rapist? Uh, pretty much everybody knows Snuka killed his girlfriend in 1983. I, I think in the grand scheme of hierarchy of things, as bad and despicable as being a racist is, it doesn't quite measure up to those other things. I'm just saying. And especially when you look at some of those guys that are being celebrated, like the Trumps, like the Tysons, the Snookas, the Pattersons, and you consider just how much of an impact, meaning, and significance that Hulk Hogan had for a long period of time over the history, the success, and the trajectory of the WWE, you would think if anybody would have an excuse made for him, anybody would have some built-in buffer there, it would be Hogan. You would think, even if you throw in the stuff about the sex tape with Bubba the Love Spun's wife and whatever creepy swinger crap they were pulling off. But it aggravates the hell out of me to see somebody like Hogan get blackballed and all these other people, Trump, Austin, Tyson, Snuka, Patterson, Warrior, kind of skate off and it's no big deal. So I saw this article the other day that Vice Sports did, I thought was really, really good. I'll put the link to it in the description box below. You should check it out. 
and it talked about kind of the hypocrisy and the kind of whitewashing the WWE is currently perpetrating uh, by trying to distance itself from the Ultimate Warrior and his legacy really away from the wrestling business and all the bad things he was about and represented and trying to use his name for good and calling out the company on that. And the WWE basically responded as such. Recogn the award and the uh, this breast cancer initiative is all about it recognizes individuals that exhibit the strength and courage of WWE's legendary character, the Ultimate Warrior. Any attempt to distract from the mission of these initiatives and take the spotlight away from the honorees is unfortunately misguided. No, it's not. That's crap. What a horrible, horrible uh, answer put out there by WWE's PR machine. Like, nobody should take that seriously. Nobody should think that answer is okay. Because what they just said is complete and total crap. What Vice Sports is trying to bring to light is the hypocrisy of celebrating a guy who said so many evil and frankly disgusting things over the years. Whereas you talk about his UConn speech, what was it, back in 2005 where he talked about queer and don't make the world work. That's not exactly a good thing, not exactly probably a thing you should say. Even if you don't like that lifestyle, even if you don't agree with that lifestyle, maybe not one of those things you should go out there and be talking about at a college speech. Not to mention the things he said about the city of New Orleans and the people of New Orleans with Hurricane Katrina, using that as a chance to take a shot at how fat they were and what type of property is that with the $200 Nikes and all this other crap, sounded like Bill Cosby, and that's probably not the guy you want to sound like anymore. And it was tinged with some racism and some other nasty things. Not to mention what he said about Heath Ledger, talking about he was glad that Heath Ledger ultimately took his life because now his daughter has a chance to move on and recover. The same guy that talked about when Bobby the Brain Heenan got cancer, that karma has a way of collecting, and he likes seeing it, basically. I mean, these are really, really bad, really horrible things that the Ultimate Warrior said. And throughout his adult life, and in particular in the later years of his adult life as he shifted to being a public speaker and a conservative commentator, you saw his homophobia. You saw some of his racism, his xenophobia. And he was just all around, frankly, a grade A jerk. He was. Now, does that mean with his second wife, Dana, and with his daughters, that he wasn't a good husband and good dad? No, can't really comment on that. Not really familiar with that. I will give benefit of the doubt and say, based off of the way they kind of look at him and view him, he must have been doing something right in those capacities. But then sitting there and saying, uh, that that automatically allows you to whitewash everything else is just complete revisionist crap. You cannot necessarily pick and choose the narratives here. You can't celebrate the guy on the one hand and then try to completely dismiss everything negative that goes with him. Why? It's terrible. Now, on the one hand, it, it, it's tough because the Warrior Award can represent some good things for people. And yes, while things like that and the thing they're doing for breast cancer in the month of October are marketing ploys by the WWE, frankly, that doesn't make the WWE any more or less evil than any other major corporation because the fact is, the simple fact is, the only reason corporations do any charitable giving whatsoever is to get some positive press for themselves. It's all about marketing. It's all about branding. You know? Bill Gates was really notorious for this. Part of the reason he started to become such a, a philanthropist was because his name had such horrible association. So he wanted to change that. He did not do it just for the good of being good. He did it for his own benefit. Now, that doesn't mean that that fundamentally is totally and completely wrong if good can come from it. So when I think about things like the Warrior Award, and shining spotlights on Connor the Crusher and Joan London and Eric Legrand and, and people like that. Is it necessarily a bad thing? Could somebody else find inspiration and courage and the will to continue to fight by seeing one of them and them being able to tell their stories, being given a platform by WWE to do that? It might be helpful. And you know, 
it's it's one of these deals that even if it wasn't necessarily W or Warrior's intention to have this type of award, it's not exactly a bad legacy to have because it can be helpful. My bigger problem with this all is ultimately where is the consistency? And I know plenty of you are going to just call me out for being a raging Hogan Mark, and that's fine. That's fine. Because I still am. Even though some of my thoughts and opinions on him have obviously changed over the years, I just can't completely walk away from all those years of being a fan of his either. It's actually kind of an awkward and tough place to be. You know, Wrestling Jeff versus Life Jeff have two really divergent opinions on the Hulkster. And where I kind of come now is kind of in the middle on him. But with that said... I think all of you would have to agree, wouldn't you, that what Vice is talking about is 100% accurate. The WWE is choosing to whitewash all the negative things that Warrior said and did over the years. And frankly, he was a grade A jerk. He just was. And don't give me that crap about don't talk bad, speak badly about the dead because they're dead and they're not here to defend themselves, to which I say bullshit lying about them and pretending they were somebody that they weren't is the ultimate way to disrespect their legacy. Legacies aren't automatically 100% positive. Memories aren't always good. They were who they were. They had some good. They had some bad. Maybe you choose to emphasize or focus more of the positives, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that, and maybe that's the way it should be, but it doesn't completely take away some of the bad that they did in their lives. And for Warrior... He said some really bad, hateful things over the years that ultimately you could say for all the trash he talked about Hogan and Hogan's personal situation, all the trash he talked about Heath Ledger committing suicide, if we're being honest, it sounds like from Warrior's standpoint, karma came to collect and it was a bitch too. Because Hogan's still alive and Warrior is not. I'm just saying. So don't give me that crap that we can't speak badly about the dead. I, I feel like we should tell the entire story. Like when I'm dead and gone, and some of you I'm sure can't wait for that someday, I hope people talk about the good things about me. I hope people talk about the not so good things about me, the bad, the negative about me, because it is an accurate representation of who I was during my time on this planet. And to sit there and pump me up to be great and spectacular all the time is just complete crap and everybody knows it and it would be an insult to my memory, my legacy, and my life to pretend like everything I did was great and perfect. So no, it is perfectly reasonable to talk shit about people when they're dead, especially, frankly, in the case of Warrior, if they sometimes deserved it. And while all Hogan said was racist and ignorant, and said it on multiple occasions, and it's not something that should necessarily be forgotten by any stretch of the imagination, in the grand scheme of things, what Warrior said and did over the years was much, much worse over a larger, more extended period of time. So all I'm calling for is some equality here, some fairness here. If we can celebrate Warrior, then why can't we celebrate Hogan? If we can make awards in Warrior's name, why is Hogan still blacklisted by the WWE, blackballed by the WWE, and not brought back by the WWE, especially when you look at the grand scheme of some of the other people that the company still will mention on television and still celebrate, have honestly done worse things than Hogan over the years. So one of those things, Warrior was who he was, good or bad, and shame on the WWE for trying to ignore it for a marketing ploy, because we're not falling for it. An equally bigger issue is how they will demonize somebody like Hogan, ostracize somebody like Hogan, and celebrate somebody who's worse, and many other people who are worse. And to me, that is a shame, and it's complete crap. And I hope the WWE, soon enough, says, okay, enough is enough. It's time to bring Hogan back home where he belongs with his WWE family before it's too late. You could do it with Ho Warrior, who was a bigger jerk and an ass than Hogan could ever dream of, and did far less for the company in Warrior's case than Hogan could ever have imagined. You know, Warrior in no way, shape, or form had anywhere near the impact at any point in time compared to Hogan. It's time to bring the Hulkster back home.